Hello there. Welcome once again to my, uh, this is the one shot video dude, uh, not so fond of editing. So bear with me while I explain a bit about rebuilding, tearing apart, going into the Mazda M5R2OD transmission. This is the M5R2, which is different than the M5R1. The M5R2 is used in Ford F-150s. The R1 is used in Bronco and Ranger. I believe, I know they used it up until 2003 because that's what I have, and I think they went into something like 2004, 2005 for the F-150s after that. I also know this bell housing on this end is for the V8, which was no longer offered after 2000, and maybe even 2003, but um, that is the V6 bell housing for the 4.2 liter Windsor V6, the Canadian engine brought into USA. <clears throat> this is for the Triton V8, either one of the two Triton V8s. I don't remember what the two displacements are. That's what the internet's for. Uh, besides the bolt pattern, you'll notice that the shift assembly at the top is more centered that's the shifter right there in the center it's more centered from front to back this one's more in the back so why do i have these i'm going to give you my story i have a, a 2003 f-150 that i rather like and i rather want to keep for a long long time and somebody had taken the top off of some part of the transmission in here not worth showing what dropped a clip inside and ran it and the chip the clip chipped off a number of gear teeth uh, broke some let then that stuff got into the bearings broke some stuff in the bearings anyway when I bought the truck it was very very noisy the transmission was noisy being the glutton for punishment that I am I bought it anyway and uh, this is my sort of unwinding project stuff that I do so uh, I found this one on eBay, I was either fortunate or more likely unfortunate to find this one on eBay for a relatively inexpensive price. It was brand spanking new. And I knew from research that I'd done that the internals would transplant directly into this one. So I, uh, this is the second, I tore this down once and tried to do a rebuild and found that the rebuild components are okay, but they're not awesome. Plus I didn't shim the shaft and play very well. I was under a time budget at the time, so I, threw it together which is always a mistake and um, long story short these bearings were pressed hard and uh, end play were pressed hard and these are now end worn the transmission was very noisy it squealed a lot as these roller elements rubbed on the inside of the race so the inside of the race is now very sharp right in there those uh, roller elements have little circles on them because they are worn there's a small step there um, and like I said, it wasn't shimmed properly and so forth. So I, uh, <clears throat> eh, you know, so I got that new one and I thought when I get time and I don't need the truck for a while, I'll tear it down, take it offline and rebuild this transmission. Work's been incredibly busy lately. So this is my uh, Sunday unwind project. So I tore them down with uh, three minutes and 45 seconds worth of babble at the beginning. I will now... Uh, talk about what you need to do to rebuild these fillers. Uh, there's a lot of videos online showing a little bit about tearing these down, but I didn't find much of any great import. So um, let's see. Here's the first thing you need is the 1993 Thunderbird Cougar Table of Contents Group 7 Transmission, Section 703 Transmission, M5 R2 Disassembly and Assembly. I will link this somewhere, hopefully. But the bad news is, as much as it says disassembly and assembly, it really doesn't do much for assembly in here. Uh, last page of this, 41 steps, says remove. It doesn't say insert, it says remove. And it has you pulling that apart. Um, do you do these in reverse to put it together? Yeah, pretty much, but there are no torques or anything else like that given in there. For those, you must turn to the 2003 Ford Motor Company F-150 Volume 2 Workshop Manual. If you have a truck like this, I think these are about 300 bucks 
on eBay, $200, $300. I would highly recommend them. I do not have this scanned. It is big. I have. There are two volumes. I do have the other volume. They are. The other volume is about the same size. I don't know. What are we talking here? Well, hell, I've got a caliper right here. So they are... Pages don't matter, right? 43 millimeters in thickness. 43 millimeters. All right, we'll go Imperial. 1.6935 inches in thickness. The pages wouldn't really help because they aren't page numbered the way you'd page number a book. They're page numbered with those awesome section, group, page type things. So that's page 166 of this group. That's page 14 of that group. All right. Uh, if anybody does have, if, if you do have questions about rebuilding this, uh, I'd welcome them. That's fine. I'll look something up if you need a torque, that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, please don't just send me a thing and say, can you rebuild my transmission? <clears throat> let's, let's start a little bit with my build environment. This is my um, glorious teak table that I love. So I've unrolled a sheet of roofing paper on it. That is the method for champions, I'll just tell you. It's an old hunter's trick. I don't know what it is. I just made it up. Let's talk about some tools. First off, this is a Mazda. Mazda starts with M, therefore it's a metric transmission. Uh, you'll need metric stuff. Some deep sockets. You're de you are going to need this big dog. It is uh, 32 millimeters. You are going to need a deep, th uh, some sort of 32 millimeter. And that is going to pull off one of these two nuts with a staked um, element to it. Uh, where is it? It should be over there somewhere. But uh, yeah, that'll pull that one off. The bigger one, there's an even more interesting trick that requires a chisel. Hopefully not my stupid masonry chisel, but a smaller chisel. You need a snap ring pliers, breaker bar probably, um, some metric. I've got 12, 14, and 15 here. 13. You need a torque wrench for reassembly if you want to do it right. Uh, razor blade for scraping gaskets. That's the bane of everybody's existence. Scotch bright for scrape, scraping gaskets. They're the bane of everybody's existence. Um, shop towel. Latex gloves if you're smart. I do have them. I'm not wearing them now. Uh, impact wrench is cool. Caliper over there is really, really important because you do need to set this end play and you do need to set it properly. And um, hands to put in the gloves. So um, how does this thing work? Well, it's all piled up here from the, from front to back, and I thought we'd just go through a little bit of it, and then we uh, could do some assembly work, and I'll just see if I can hold a camera. I'm not fancy enough to have a tripod, so I'll hold the camera as I go. This is the main shaft of the tra transmissions. This type of transmission has two shafts. Uh, most of them do. I don't know of any that doesn't. It has the main shaft and the counter shaft. And this is a... A continuous mesh transmission, which means the gears are always in mesh with their counter shaft, counter shaft counterparts. Uh, this section right here is first through fourth gears. This back section is fifth and reverse. So when you're shifting, you're shifting this ring, this ring, and there's a ring over here that goes down here, a third ring. So these work out that your left when you're, in, when you're shifting first, second, you're in the left, that's this ring, forward, back. Middle, forward, back of the, of the gear shift lever shifts this ring, clicks left, clicks, clicks right. And then when you're in the right for fifth and reverse, you're either clicking this ring up here to fifth or reverse. So three groups, two positions each, six total gear positions, that's five speeds in reverse. Uh, this is the... Now, I've got this backward for you. I'm sorry about this. This is the input side. This is what goes in the engine. This is the output side. This is what goes to the drive shaft. One way you can tell is the big, long spline on here, which engages with the uh, female spline on the drive shaft. And as your suspension goes up and down, uh, the drive shaft will get closer and farther from the transmission, a uh, little radius thing, and uh, that'll allow that to slide. So that's why you've got plenty of space for engagement there. On this side, as I said, this is the engine side. This is the pilot for the pilot bearing that goes inside the flywheel. The um, hydraulic slave cylinder, 
this is 2020 we've got all sorts of problems going on so this the hydraulic cylinder that's driven by the the pedal pushes the clutch back and forth engages and dis disengages the clutch which would be on in front of this and um, well anyway that's how you get power into the transmission you have a main bearing on the input side with its conical race uh, right here that's a that's a tapered roller bearing it's going to take some thrust load and it's also going to take quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of thrust load actually and then you've got the output side here and you've got its conical race floating around here somewhere should be right here ah there it is yep there is its conical race so if you buy a rebuild kit you're not going to get this gear and honestly you're not going to need it because the gear is not going to be worn out what you are going to get are bearings seals plastic parts like this oil pump yes it does have an oil pump and you're going to get the synchro rings the synchronizer rings uh, now we're 11 minutes in and i hope that this is not boring to you but these are the synchronizer rings and these are when you start pushing your gear lever forward and you're going to go from say second to third this gets caught first and starts spinning up the part of the transmission that's not yet spinning so it synchronizes I th what we'll do is we'll pause this a few times i'll put a few pieces together and then i'll show you how it works all right so that's the main shaft it's split into two as i said it's not one continuous piece it's two and in between those pieces is a cage of roller bearings so if the input shaft and the output shaft were all one then one revolution of the input shaft would equal one revolution of the output shaft that would kind of defeat the purpose of a transmission so this doohickey in here is always taking up the difference whether this one is spinning faster as in as is the case when you're in first gear or this output shaft is spinning faster as in the case when you're in uh third fourth fifth anything over uh well not third fourth fifth uh fourth and fifth i think are both over one yeah, maybe just fifth is over one you could figure it out from these gear di diameters here whichever one is about the same size that that's the one that's going to be the unity uh so it should be here's first small on the input big on the output here's second these look pretty similar so it must be second gear well motorheads will laugh at me for not knowing that but hey you get what you pay for with youtube right so this takes up whatever difference there is between the speed in the input shaft and the output shaft and it's always going to be turning somewhat relative uh, velocities angular velocities between this one and this one so we'll shove that back in his little hole for now and it also fits of course on that boss on that shaft bearing so uh what else do we have for gotchas on this <clears throat> Let's talk just a little bit about how a transmission actually shifts. <clears throat> so the, as I said, these are continuous mesh transmissions, meaning the gears are always touching. These uh, helical cut gears, which are helical cut like this on an angle so that they're quieter than straight cut gears. <clears throat> helical cut gears are cut on an angle, they're quieter. That has the negative effect <clears throat> of torque just like a ramp or a screw thread torque on the gear twisting force this way is going to impart some force this way so what we'll do to compensate for that is we'll cut remember they're always meshing we'll cut the input side gear one direction this one and this one and then we'll cut the output gear no will we the output gear will be cut the other direction somehow well I hope somebody knows better than me on that comment down below i do know about gears but i don't know about this much about these transmissions so uh, i hope somebody corrects me on that <clears throat> the beauty of the internet so these are the synchronizer rings that i mentioned earlier and this is i think they call it a sleeve but i've always heard it called a dog and this ring right here has a uh, internal now let me show you what i got going on this ring right here has internal teeth on it if I push this out far enough, you'll see the internal teeth all the way around it. And when I s shift my gear, and you'll hear a click that sounds vaguely like uh, when you're shifting your car's transmission. When I shift my gear, that clicks back and forth, and it engages the gear that's normally sp spinning freely here. See the shaft is stationary, and the gear is spinning. This gear is spinning. 
this gear is not spinning because it's stuck on the ground. Spinning, spinning. If I pull this left, that gear is now engaged to the main shaft. Okay? So if I push this back in the center, that gear is able to spin. <laughs> this is basically neutral for this um, set of gears. This one, same deal. This thing is able to spin right now. Output shaft is spinning because, again, because that's what's tied to the, um, that's what's sitting on the ground. This gear is sitting on the ground. So if I tie this together, now that's rolling with that gear. If I loosen that up, this gear is now spinning freely compared to that. So I can tie this gear to the main shaft by switching this over to here. Or I can tie this gear to the main shaft by, hold on, there we go, switching this over to here. Okay, so that's how the whole system works. This one, this one, this one, this one are in constant mesh with this one, this one, this one, this one. Yes, you're going to say, what about this one down here? And I am going to say, well, that's fifth gear in reverse. Those sit on the side of the transmission. There's no way I'm going to be able to do this. Those sit on the side of the transmission basically like that. And one of them gives you fifth gear, and the other one, there has to be a, another gear in there to give you reverse. Where's that other gear? Well, all right, why does there have to be another gear in there? Well, okay. If you have one gear turning clockwise, this gear turning counterclockwise, it'll turn this gear clockwise again. We want the input shaft to be going, say, clockwise, and the output shaft to be going, say, clockwise or same direction. If you want to go reverse, you need a third gear. You can't have one gear to another. You have to have an odd number of meshes. There's the reverse gear, oftentimes called the reverse idler gear. And it does not have quite the same bearing and everything in it that the forward gear has because, well, how often you go in reverse? So, uh, you know, it can, doesn't have to run nearly as often. This one, for example, has little needle cages in it. In fact, this one has two needle cages stacked end to end on it. I believe that's the fifth gear. So if you're not running in fifth gear, then uh, these guys are spinning all the time. Only when you're running in fifth gear is this thing spinning as fast as the shaft that it's on. No disregard that because this one is spinning all the time on its shaft. No, it is. I've... This is the fun of my non-editing videos. Yes, this one is uh, only spinning when it's not in fifth gear. Whew, got that down. All right, and that over there is the tail piece. That is the part, as I said earlier, this is um, reversed because this is the engine side. This is the output side. That is the tailpiece. If you had a four-wheel drive truck, which my glorious truck named Leroy is not a four-wheel drive truck, that part would um, that part would be replaced with one that hooks up to a transfer case, so it's four-wheel drive. All right, so that's the explanation. I'm going to um, next. We're going to go into a little bit of assembly on this.